sound that is awakening. We will create it now. What's that sound, y'all? The sound of unity. Everybody say one vision, one voice. There's a sound. Amen. We thank the Lord again. 
him for his goodness unto us. Everyone on our feet as we go before the Lord in prayer. You know that there are many names on our prayer list, but we want to pray and ask the Lord to come by and look on us today as we assemble for this service. Let the Lord will have his way, that he will save souls, and that he will deliver. Let's go before the Lord. Father, we thank you now for your loving kindness and for your tender mercy. It's such a great God. Hallelujah. There's nobody like him nowhere. No one has your wisdom. No one has your might. No one has your power. No one has your ability. No one has your love. No one has your favor. No one has your compassion, your gentleness, your touch, your presence, God. There's nobody like you nowhere. And for that, we give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. We come into your sanctuary today, lifting up your our hands, oh God. We come into your house, clapping our hands. We come into your house of our house open. Heal the great worship and gratitude for this great God that we serve. What can we render unto you, Lord, for all your many benefits towards us, Lord? We come before you today, offering you our thanks our appreciation and our gratitude. Now, Father, we ask on today that you would come into our midst. Hallelujah. Father, we ask that your spirit would have free course, oh God. We're in a new place on today, but your presence is here. Your love is here. Your power is here. Your strength is here. Your joy is here. Your hope is here. Salvation is here. Healing is here. Deliverance is here. Liberty is here. The Holy Spirit of the Lord is here. So, Father, we ask for today that you would have your way, move by your power, move by your spirit, destroy every yoke, pray on every stronghold, all sickness and disease, we command it to go in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, take control. Be in control of our worship. Be in control of our praise. Be through the man of God on today. Send your word on today. Touch you and says, praise ye the Lord. Praise, praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him for in the firmament of his power. Praise him for the mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the temple and the dance. Praise him with the string instruments and the organs. Praise him from the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding symbol, symbols. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Now, let's keep reading what we call our first name, the Lamb Twelve in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. God is good. Our scripture this morning will be coming from Romans 8. Verses 35 through 39. Romans 8, 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword as it is written? For thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for our scripture reading. We're going to now have our praise and worship. Come on, you don't have to sit down. We're going to praise the Lord on this morning. Even those that are at home, come on and have praise and worship with us on this morning. Praise the Lord, everybody.
day has been supported by He is wonderful. And all we come to do is just to give God corporate worship. All together, not in our homes, not in our car, but we come together to give God the glory on this morning. Hallelujah. Do you have, we have our verse of the month, and of those that have been following us or have been watching us, we have a verse of the month. Um, every month that we have throughout the year, and this month is going to be coming from St. Matthew's 22, 37 through 40. Matthew, St. Matthew's 27, verses 37 through 40. And we're going to recite from the message Bible, if that's all right with you, out there and those of you that are here. Amen? And the rest of the month goes like this. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence. This is the most important, the first on any list, but there's a second to set aside alone. Love others as well as you love yourself. These two commands are pegs. Everything in God's law and the prophet hangs from there. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. Come on, put your hands together. One more time. As we go to the front of the service, we're not going to pause the service, but we're just going to move right along. Is that all right? Somebody said church announcements. Mighty God. Church announcements, June 12, 2022. Here we go. Birthday recognition on today. Well, not today, but in the month of June. Our pastor, our very own pastor, Mr. Elder George Truman Sr. We we'll celebrate, we we'll we'll celebrate his 70th birthday. Come on now. We want to reflect the seventy. Two of the seventy of my mix. The seventy. God bless you. My God. And also the birthday of Elder Joe Hayes. He was celebrating ninety nine. Whoa! Well, the hands of your watcher who love you. Happy birthday. And also my very own, my namesake, my son, Vincent Oliver. This is E. Oliver, who got this June 19. My son. My boy. My only son. Midweek Empowerment. Meet us on Zoom this Wednesday for Midweek Empowerment. Corporate prayer will begin at 7 p.m. and online Bible study will be held at 7.30. Join us as our pastor Twilly shares teaching in our series, Living the Good Life. All are welcome to join and attend. Father's Day celebration. This Juneteenth, we are celebrating emancipation and our fathers. Tune in for our online Father's Day celebration service to be held Sunday, June 19th, right here on the same dial, same station at 12 noon. Is that all right? In-person worship celebration. Make plans to join us next Sunday Well, the future Sundays that we're going to have July 10th and July 24th. In person worship is J Sunday, July 10th, and Sunday, July 24th, after next Sunday's celebration. We'll come back and say, we'll give that all to you again. All right. The services will be held right here in Anacostia Room of the Homewood Suites, located at 9103. Basil Court, Lago, Maryland, 20774. Registration is not required. Tell the neighbor, registration is not required. However, 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 however. Masks must be worn and all COVID protocols will be, particip will be practiced. Please invite a friend and a loved one to come join um, in with us. The DC Delaware Maryland District Council summer session will convene July 21st through July 23rd. Evening sessions will be held in person and daytime sessions will be held online. Dues for upcoming sessions must be submitted by Sunday, July 10th. Additional details will be announced. For additional updates during our week, please visit the church website at faithhopecherryministries.org. Again, faithhopecherryministries.org. 
www.ghostdoctor.org or our social media pages. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Come on, put your hands together for our Sunday morning announcement. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to move into our giving. Put your hands together for our giving, man. So now look, I've been alone. Whatever we were, let's get out the mouth of God. Bring your tithes and offerings into the storehouse. Know that the liberal soul uh, shall be made fat. And those of you that, again, that are watching us in our in, uh, social media land, we have four different ways for you to give. Four, four. Four pachos in Spanish. Four different ways for you to give. Using the cash app, you may send your contributions to dollar sign FHCM. Again, if you're using cash app, you can send your contributions to dollar sign FHCM. If you're using Gillify um, on your devices, donors may be able to search Faith, Hope, and Charity. Faith, Hope, and Charity and give from your phone, tablet, or mobile device. Using Gillify, please search for Faith, Hope, and Charity if you're giving from your tablet or mobile device. Also, if you're visiting our website, their website is faithhopecharityministries.org and click on Make a Donation. Again, faithhopecharityministries.org and click on Make a Donation. And also, we still use USPCS. Somebody said, praise the Lord. We still use the postal service, mighty God. Your address, your donation payable to Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries. That address is 3804 Indicott Place, Springdale, Maryland, 20774. If you're mailing again, that address is Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries, 3804 Indicott Place, Springdale, Maryland, 20774. And those that are right here on site with us and in person, you may give your cash and your checks on the sanctuary during the offering of dismissal. So again, those that want to give offering or check, cash or check, at the end of the service, dismissal, you will be able to give that to our deacon, uh, Derek Martin. Is that all right? Y'all come lower here. Is that all right? Come on, put your hands together. Again, come to the most important part of the service on today. Man, should not live by bread alone with every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And certainly, we need a word for today. Not a word for yesterday, but a word for today. That we can, a fresh word, a fresh word. That we can know how to live a sacred and consecrated life before the Lord. Is that all right? I ask that those that are in the sanctuary, you can stand to your feet and be praying. Our pastor, none other than this guy, a George Trudy singer, praying as he comes in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. Come on, give him some glory. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on, give him some praise in the house. Give him some glory. Thank you for being such a great God. 
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we praise him today. We praise him today. We praise him today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We thank and praise the Lord for each and every one of you being here today. We thank and praise the Lord for giving us this opportunity, Lord God, to share in this great gospel. Lord, we're thanking each and every one, musicians, for being with us today. We thank you for the Lord. Yes, yes. Lord, thank you, Lord. God will make a way somehow. Won't he, Won't he do it? God will make a way somehow. You might not know, but God knows what we stand in need of. And for that, we are so thankful to the Lord. We want to give God praise for each and every one of you for being with us today. You could have been any other place, could have gone to another church, could have stayed at home and watched it over the airways, but you saw fit to come in today. And for those that are watching, we're so thankful for you for tuning in with us today. The enemy, he brings up all these obstacles to try to make us deter from our destination. But the Lord, he gives us a vision, he gives us a mindset that I'm coming to church. If it's within my means, I'm coming to church. Cars break down, enemy trying to snatch victory, accidents happen, come on, give him some praise. But in spite of all that, I'm still, wherever I am, I'm going to give him some glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to give him some praise today. Hallelujah. In spite of what's going on around my life, I'm going to give him some praise. And we're thankful to the Lord today. Hallelujah, Jesus. As we continue to uh, magnify God, even in this day and time, we are, this is our first time being in this facility to be able to have service, but God has been gracious to us. He's found ways to make out of no come to him so impressed by my God. I don't know about you. I don't know why I say impressed because why am I even thinking that he would make a way out of no way? Hallelujah. So we're thankful to God for that. We believe the Lord has a word for us today. Even uh, in these trying times, you know, we are sitting here in a time where there's things that are going against us that I, I know the mics is reverberating and it's going acting crazy over there, but we are going to fix it. We're going to get it together after a while, but we're going to still go before the Lord with uh, a message for you because we are unified. Yeah. I tell you, come on somebody, unity prevails. Yeah. Yes, it does. Unity prevails. We are unbreakable. We are unshakable. We are unified. Our focus is on Jesus. I tell you, we're so thankful to have a focus on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to let you know that God has given us a word for you today out of Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter, verses 21. Deuteronomy, seventh chapter, verses 21. Hallelujah. 7, 21. Seven, twenty-one, seven, that magical number. Hallelujah. And it reads as such, glory. You shall not be terrified of them, for the Lord your God, the great and awesome God, is among you. Come on, put your hands together. God is awesome. Yes, he is. God is awesome. He's an awesome God. And our subject or our theme today is God is awesome. We'll just leave it at that. God is awesome. God is awesome. Hallelujah. That word awesome, Thank that you. word awesome, causing wonders or an astonishments, things that will blow your mind. There are words that even relate to it that we sometimes uh, throw ourselves into a different mindset, but incomprehensible, inconceivable, incredible, unbelievable, unimaginable, unthinkable. It is an awesome God that we think of, that we love, that's been there down through the years and take us through all of the trials, everything that you, come on, you know you've gone through some things and that awesome God that we serve, he brought you out of stuff 
stuff that you didn't even know that was out there. How about those dangers that are unseen that God has brought you through? I'm telling you, he's an awesome God. Come on, give him some awesome praise. Give him an awesome praise. Give him some glory up in here. God is working things right now. I'm telling you, in the midst that we're living in, in all the things that we're going, the enemy, the enemy, he tries to confront us. He tries to mess up our life. The enemy, he brings about hostility. He brings about things to attack us, to looking for ways to threaten us and to change man's lifestyle. So sometimes the enemy, he says, power is going to come up to no win. He's going to lose out because we serve an awesome God. Without a supernatural help, we still uh, have a God that's right there providing for us, providing for us through cancer, providing to us through heart problems, providing to us to other diseases and accidents and drugs and alcohols and loneliness. The list can go on and on. But God is bringing you through all those things. How about depression? How about discouragement? Anybody feel discouraged sometimes? Look, I'm telling you, even when we walk up this morning, we had a mind to make it here without any obstacles. But the enemy tried to raise his head and bring up about but my awesome God. He still allows us to be here on time. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The attacks. He threatens us. He looks for ways to destroy us. He is always trying to mess things up. Now Moses, in the scripture that we're reading, he knows the fact that the enemy is trying to slow us up. He even knows that the children of Israel are on a mission. How many know that you're on a mission? How many know that, come on, talk to me somebody. How many know that we are on a mission? God has made a promise to us. We got a promised land out there, come on here. It is waiting for, he's already got it laid out for us. He's got a promised land for us. But even trying to get to the promised land, there's going to be some obstacles. And in the obstacles, those things are just like the children of Israel were. They knew that the land that they were trying to accomplish had a whole lot of equipped and people, people that had more strength than they did in some way. Mm -hmm. They had more soldiers, more chariots, more warriors. How many know that God does a lot with just a little? It don't take much for my God. He does a lot with just a little. Children, they want, they want they want to match up against Canaan, the, the armies, Jericho, the Great Wall, the fortress. But God, He's an awesome God. He will work things out on His own timetable. But fear will mess up the whole thing. Fear, if you're afraid, you won't even win. You got to get back beyond some of the obstacles in your mind. Fear will change your whole confidence. But you got to be willing to stand and wait on the Lord. God will do a thing. Anybody will wait for a thing from the Lord? Anybody got something on their list that they've been waiting on? God will do something to throw the whole thing off way. God is that type of God. So Moses, he begins to prepare the people to remove all the fears that might come up when they come up. To, but think about David. David, when he saw that Goliath, the other soldiers were afraid. But David says, who is this uncircumcised? Yes. Who is it? Because I serve all, he didn't take it for a bunch of men. Mm -hmm. I serve an awesome God. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. An awesome God. He's a powerful God. But you got to believe. Remove all doubt. Thank you, sir. God will make a way for you to be victorious. It's seven, you gotta drink a little bit more water. 
Yes. At 69, I drink some. <laughs> but at 70, I got to drink more. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. But God is awesome. He's awesome. He told me to get a drink of water. Yes, sir. So you'll be all right. Look, I'm going to tell you right now that the Lord is working things out right now where you might think that we can't make it, but we're going to make it. We on a new stroke. God has promised us some stuff. And look, I'm telling you right now, it looks maybe kind of bleak. I'll check the count ain't like it should be. Come on, talk to me, somebody. But tell somebody it's going to get there. God's going to do a whole lot. Was one thousand people get a thousand dollars, we got a million dollars. I'm just telling you what he told me. He said a short time. Now I put a time limit on, but short time to God, it could be tomorrow. It could be the next. Y'all in here, man? But tell somebody he's awesome. He will do it. But I got to remove your fears and your doubts. You got to remove all that stuff out of your mindset because that's what the enemy wanted. They ain't gonna do it. They never gonna look out. Tell you right there, God is working it out for us right now. I just need some believers with me today. I need some believers that don't get caught up in your own imagination. The children of Israel have an opportunity to get caught up in all their own imagination. They know what the Hittites and the Gergesites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and all those other sites, the Hivites. He knew all they knew all about how big their armies were. That was enough to tell them, come on back home. They never going to say Egypt wasn't that bad. But God had promised them something. When God promised you got a home, that's what the other promise to tell them. Get God to make a promise to you and then hold him to it. Hold him to it. And what the people of Israel had to really understand what Moses was trying to share with them, if you obey, come on, talk to me, somebody. If you just obey me, I will hold no good thing from you. The problem is, is obedience. Uh, he say that, but you see all those soldiers out there? Yes. But my God, just think about walk around the wall and keep your mouth shut. Lord have mercy. Just keep walking and be quiet. And then when the Lord tells you to shout, watch the walls come tumbling down. But you got to believe. Trust him. Trust that the Lord will do it. See, because the Israelites were to destroy the enemy. See, you got to do just what the Lord says. You can't half step this. He wanted them to destroy their enemies. Now, let's say, yeah, God love how he wants them to do it. But sometimes you got to remove some stuff out of your way. He told them to destroy because I don't want you to get mixed up with all those other things and all those other because you, you're not strong enough. That's why you got to wipe some stuff out. Because God said it. Because God has given them the same opportunity to tell you to get it right. He waited on. People of Israel they could have been saved. Could have. If they had a repentant, saved their life. But they wouldn't do it. Telling you today, get right with God. Get your life together. Don't get destroyed. Don't get caught up. Don't worship false gods. Don't worship all those foolishness. You got to keep your mind on the prize. And the prize is what God has already purposed for you. I'm telling you today, there are some things in your life that you know for yourself that if it had not been for the Lord, if it had not been for Jesus, You'd have been cut off a long time ago, but God, through all of his wisdom, he knew that's what you stood in need of. He knew how to get your attention. How many has he gotten your attention today? How many has he gotten your attention? Sometimes we need to get a slap out out here so that God can get out. Come on. How many know that the Lord brought you here, woke you up this morning? How many know? God is such a great God. And in spite of all how we turned our back on him, that awesome God, he forgave us. Come on here. He forgave you for some of the craziness things that you've done. He's a forgiving God. How many know that he's a forgiver? Yes, yes, yes. Tell them somebody, my promised land is waiting on me. I know there are going to be many obstacles. There are issues to get there. 
my mind. I got to keep my focus on Jesus. There are things that are going to try to deter me from getting to my pride, but I got to look beyond. Come on, I got to look to the hill. Come on, I got to go beyond the mountain top. I got to see Jesus. I got to see. Anybody want to see their promise? Come to fruition. You got to have a, a mindset to let it come. You got to obey him. He says, having therefore these promises, Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of flesh and spirit. It says, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. You have to set yourself to be separated from things. You got to have your mind ready to serve God. Yes. By doing that, you have to obey. Because the Lord redeemed you and saved you from the enslavement of Egypt. Egypt. That's what he did for the children of Israel. He brought them away from those things. God has turned your life around. He has delivered many of us from many different things. Some were whoremongers. Some were alcoholics. Some used drugs. Some have done all kinds of things. And look, God has delivered. Y'all ought to give him some praise wherever you might be. Such for some of you. Some of y'all ought to give him some glory because you know that the Lord brought you through. You didn't go through no step program. It was the Lord. It was nobody but Jesus. Because he's a conqueror. He conquers all enemies. And he'll help you get to your promised land. I'm telling you, you get this reason after reason why we should hold on to him. Reason and reason why he should why we should obey him. Because all you have to do is think about what he did for you yesterday. And that's enough to get you through today. You know there were some things. You know, the world today is topsy turvy. Things are going up and down. You don't know what tomorrow's going to bring you. You go to the store, you might not make it out. Come on, talk to me somebody. You send your kids off to school, they may not make it home. Come on, talk to me somebody. There's so much evil in the land. They're making it so evil. The enemy is he's making it so e much easier for people to destroy one another. Come on, talk to me, somebody. We are living in dangerous times, but I'm telling you our awesome God. He's planted some angels round about you. He's got some people out there right here. Somebody pray for me, y'all. They had me on their mind. They took the time. I'm telling you right now, the angels of the Lord, they kept around. I need some worshipers up in here. God will do it. He's an awesome God. In spite of all the things that the world was trying to do, God is still blessing. He's still delivering. But you gotta obey. You gotta obey him. And when you obey him, you can see the prize. Because he's sharing with us each and every day the promised land. There's pro every one of us got some promises. You some of us are looking for our kids to graduate from high school. Some of them are looking for their kids to graduate from college. Some of them are looking for their kids to graduate from uh, uh, to a different uh, field of work. Some of them are just looking for their kids to graduate to get out there. Uh -oh. Get out the house. <laughs> but it's an awesome God. I'm telling you, he's really working things out for our good. He's doing things, and it takes obedience. God will keep his promise with us because he loves us. He loves the people of God. Look, there was nothing unique about the children of Israel. Let me break it all down. There was nothing unique about you. I'm going to tell you right now. You are a sinner just like everybody else. Look, but he, beyond all that, they, they weren't such a great nation. They didn't have all those numbers. But, but God did. He blessed Abraham. Come on, give him some praise. And see, Abraham, come on, I'm talking right now to somebody. That God will make a change out of your life when you realize that I was nothing. I was a sinner. God. Saved by grace. Yeah. I'm telling you, you got to get to a point where you weren't so special. Yeah. You had your issues, just like the woman with the issues of blood. You had with some problems. Let me, let me tell you, break it all down. You had some things that weren't going right in your life. But God. But God. He was beyond all your faults, all the issues that you had. Come on, talk to me, somebody. He did all that. Tell me what he did for me. He did it for me. And for that, I'm thankful. I'm grateful. And I love the Lord that much more. I tell you, he will increase your numbers just like he did for Israel. 
I'm in a small group of people that multiplied and multiplied and multiplied. And when they saw their foes, even in their doubt, when they're weary and not knowing that they can win, they were victorious because God purposed for them to be so. And that takes obedience. God's going to tell you to do some things and you don't say, that I don't know. Well, I'm telling you, you better know that it's the Lord telling you to do it. And you better move forward. He will multiply all of your things. So Moses, he emphasized this thing. He was trying to condition the people because people, it doesn't take us much to be fearful of the enemy. If you, the enemy sit there and show all these negative things out there. You say, I don't want People today are uh, uh, get so fearful of the enemy, they might not even go to stores now because they don't think it's safe. But I'm telling you right now, the angels round about me. I, I need something. I'm still going to do what I, I'm telling you. The Lord is blessed. He's going to continue to bless. But you got to trust him. You can't hold back. You can't let things affect you. So the solution for doubt and fear is spelled out by Moses saying it's obedience. Because we serve an awesome God. We sang a song with, uh, how did it go? It's awesome, with wisdom, power. Y'all remember that song? Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. Our God. He's an awesome God. He is. He's an awesome God. Sister Martin's out there singing for y'all that came here. She was. She, she was not the background. She was the vocalist, the lead vocalist. She was singing her song. But she knew that God is an awesome God. And he reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. Nobody ever can. I know for myself that he's an awesome God. When you can tell, tell somebody else and know for yourself that it had, it had not been for Jesus because he brought you from a mighty long way. I tell you, that Moses had to declare it. To be an overcomer from fear, you have to trust the Lord and know that God is an awesome God. That he will bring you through no matter how bleak it might appear. God will do just what he said. I will never leave. Come on, I talk to somebody. I will never leave you. I ain't doing it. I promise you. I'm here. All you got to do is obey. And the Lord would do just like he laid judgment upon the Amorites, the Hittites, and the Gerdesites, and all the other sites. All those that he, he'll put the Israelites there to destroy them. Come on, talk to me. He will give the little to take you out. God will do just that. He will take you out. That's what he's doing to the enemy today. He's taking them out of your way. The day is a yay to my walk through the valley and the shadow of death. I fear. Because why? Thou art with me, the awesome God. He's on the He's all around. Come on here, church. All oh, powerful. My God. Who wouldn't serve a God? Who wouldn't worship a God that got all the answers and is there for your betterment? Who wouldn't serve a God that has your back? I'm talking, he got your front, he got your side. You talk about putting on a, a bulletproof vest. You got a, the vest that you're gonna protect the front. God protects my back, he protects my shin, my leg. That's why we gotta put on the whole arm of God. He's got everything lined up for you right now. He's got things that line up to protect my head so the things that infiltrate me, you can't talk to me any kind of way. Because God is an awesome God. God wants you to destroy those idols, to burn them with fire. He don't want you to cover the silver and the gold and the idols. He don't want you to keep those idols. He wants you to get rid of them. The believer must face enemies throughout life, enemies that strife and fear and doubt their heart. The enemies are often strong and they have to really put their, fit, uh, their mindset together and take the enemies out. They don't have to worry about the diseases and the accidents and the drugs and all those things. The enemy, he's trying to take our mindset and move us into a different direction. But Moses is telling us, do not think, don't think on these things. Think of how the Lord is going to bring you through. Think that God has already promised you victory. Has God promised you victory? Has he promised anybody victory today? 
Can God already promise you victory? Come on, let me see some victorious people out right here. I want to see some people that are really giving glory and praying and doing some things right now. I'd love to see some worshipers. I want to see the priests go before me. I gave my all to him. I was like the widower 
And all she had was, come on here, talk to me, somebody. The Bible says that Jesus said that he looked at the offering and he said, this, this lady is giving more than all my deacons and my elders and my bishops and all that. He said, look, she gave her all. I need some all people today that are willing. God will do it. He will do it. He will multiply your stuff. But you have to trust him and stop trying to figure it out on your own. That's the problem. We're trying to figure it out. How can I do this? We'll listen to somebody else tell us how to do it. Instead of following God's plan. God has a promise for you. Call. Same thing. You look forward to call? Let God lead you. Trust God. College education. <laughs> Scholarship. You can get it. God will open up a door. You say, I didn't know my grades were that good. God said, don't worry about it. If you follow his instructions, you'll find that God will do things in a miraculous way because he's an awesome God. I told you when we started the words that we looked at and why we looked and determined what awesome meant. God is telling you right now that I do incredible things. I do things that will blow your mind. I do things that are fascinating. I do things yeah. that are interesting. Yeah. I do things that uh, will, but some people say, oh, you mean to be rich, but I'm telling you, it's nobody but God that he did. Yeah. And you got to trust him. This is a warning to us that don't look at the outside influences. Don't let things fool you. God is not a rabbit. He's not trying to pull no magician. He's not trying to pull no, no rabbit out of his head. God is not the man to do a little magic because he knows all things. You know what he saw what he did with the sea, the Red Sea. Anybody can open up a oh, come on, talk to me. That was no magic. He says, use what you got, boy. And the Bible says that the waters. They sent plagues. They said, it's going to hurt y'all. But it's going to take them. Y'all ain't hearing me. Awesome God. He's still healing. He's still delivering. He's still bringing people out of the dungeons right now. Some are locked up, but God is now opening up the door. How did you get out? Nobody but Jesus. They had an elder to share with us that he was in prison, and he said he was guilty. He said it was murder. He said, I did it. He was in jail. But he was repentant. And the probation, they saw the repentance in it. And he got out. He said, how? It's nobody. He began to preach the word of God. He began to share God's blessings. He changed his life. Don't get mad because God blessed him. Rejoice in the Lord. I'm telling you right now, also God has something in store for you. But it's going to take you to trust him, to believe in him, and obey him. Is we're a church, we serve an awesome God. That's all I can tell you. That He's an awesome God. I don't care how bad it looks, He's still an awesome God. But you gotta trust Him. Some might say trust and obey. It's the only way. Believe Him. If there's anybody sounding my voice, that are looking for a change in their life. The elders will come, and he's going to share with you your steps to glory, what it takes to be in the army of the Lord. It's something that we should all look forward to. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.